Welcome to this lecture from ZBrush Character and Concept Sculpting Module 1 course. Now I've decided to do a series of videos showing little parts of my Character and Concept Sculpting Module 1 course which I've got out which you can find a link below. Um, the reason I'm doing this is that I want to show you quick things that I'm going to be doing in the course and you might decide actually you want to take this course because I go into a lot more detail over things so I'm going to do a few videos in series here and um, basically this is a model that you can see here and you can see the course key points that I've got there such as hair sculpting, sculpting base to high res, create and insert uh, brushes, micro mesh surface noise, nano mesh, curve on surface brushes, high detail projection, stitching, decoration, posing your sculpt and also rendering and a hell of a lot more so check out the link below to see the full course details and um, what you're going to get if you decide to purchase the course so these are little snippets um, another reason I'm doing it is that you can see if you like my teaching style if you like it then you might want to spend hours listening to me do the actual course which is over 180 video lectures and literally must be about 40 50 hours worth of recording so um, let's begin and the first thing we're going to cover here is insert brushes okay so in this little um, tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an insert brush now if you're going to take my character modeling course the detail course which you can find in the description you can find a link to it down there to find out more information then I'm going to cover it in a lot more detail this is just a quick guide to sort of show you my teaching style and if you like it you'll want to take the course that's what I'm hoping so anyway so it's also useful for you to know this sort of stuff anyway so it's good if you're already a seasoned uh, ZBrush user then you'll probably know if you're intermediate you'll know these techniques anyway uh, you might need a refresher so it could help all right so what I've got here is I've got a tool up here this is just a low poly sphere and then I've made a duplicate of that now I've made a duplicate of that for a reason because I'm actually going to split the tools out from it when you use an insert brush you have to put it all into an existing tool so um, you can split those tools out but it's easier I find just to make a duplicate and to use that so that's why I've done it so this is going to be our receiver for our inserts as you can see it's a low res mesh if we now jump to the sub tools that I've created here you'll see that I've got three tools one is a high resolution or higher and it's got no subdivision levels um, the top one here has got no subdivision levels but it's a low res one I also creased it as well so that when I divide it like this it's going to go nice and smooth and sharp okay so I just hit the crease button there and it puts these little creases around the edges all right so the next tool I've got down here is a variation so they're all different and this one has also not got subs it's got high subs so this is a high one different version so I've got three tools they're all in the same orientation notice the floor um, direction does make a difference especially when you're creating the curve on surface brushes so that's something to bear in mind I'm not going to go over that here I go over that in my full course so if I want to make these an insert brush I just go up to my brush palette here I'm just going to turn polyframe off and I'm just going to come up to here and I'm just going to go down straight to the create insert brush I'm going to go new because I want it to be new now just before I do that there's something you need to um, bear in mind the name of these is what the name of the tool will be called okay the name of the sub tools so make sure you rename them by using the rename tab down there so we click new and there we go test one so now I'm going to jump to this other tool I'm going to come into here and I want to append it into the same brush so I'm going to go I'm going to do the same go create insert brush I'm going to append this time and now you're going to see M come up so you can swap between tools while you're working click OK now I'm going to go to the third one come down here click append okay and I've got three tools in there as insert brushes now to save this brush out you just go save as from the brush palette and you can save that to wherever you like you could also put it into your light box as well so now we've got those brushes set up um, I always suggest that you save out your tools here because you might want to add to them or you might want to create a new one or you might want to use the original meshes so it's always a good idea to save those 
out so you've got them so I'm going to go back to my insert receiver which is here and now with this test free enabled I'm just going to click and drag now you can see what I'm doing is it masks the the sphere so that you're allowed to go in and think do things like scale and move around and push it into the model and as soon as you go back into draw here and you click another one everything will be masked apart from that one now if I want to swap between the tools I can press M and you can jump across to another tool so I could select this tool here press M come to this one I could also go up here and select them from here as well now that's basically an insert brush now once you've done this press control key and drag to unmask it all and I'm just going to turn the floor off now what if I want to split this away from the other well what I can do is I can press the control shift and alt click on the sphere and it will get rid of all the things so I want to press the control shift and drag and it will just give me here now because these have got no subdivision levels in them as you can see I can go down to the modified topology and delete hidden and now if I press control shift and drag or click they are on their own but I have this duplicate that I created that I can bring back that I can manipulate separately so now I could divide this one up if I wanted to control D or you can go down to geometry divide there so there we go and if you look at this if I come back to this tool and turn the poly frame on you can see that it's it keeps that same resolution that you've got on those parts right you could also go in and split all these up as well into their own groups by going down to split so if you look there if I turn line off you can see there's there's different groups there so if you wanted to split all those into groups you go to split split and group split and click OK and then you would get a split the only problem is that this had separate poly groups so it split all of them so you might want to go split similar parts all right so that's kind of it on insert meshes as I said I cover a lot more detail on these as well as other brush types inside of my course I'm just showing you the promo now from the course just so you can get an idea of what it's all about and I hope this has been of help for you and I'll see you around Welcome to this course, Module 1, ZBrush Concept and Detailed Character Sculpting course. So this module is one of a series taking you from initial design all the way to a ZBrush game ready asset with hours of video training. Now in this particular module, Module 1, we're going to be concentrating on actually concept and detailing our character to get it like the course image that you're seeing in front of you now. So along the way, we're gonna be covering a host of features, including the following. Creating a base meshes, I'm gonna show you three different ways of doing that. We're gonna be building a high resolution body from the base mesh, and we'll be detailing it through all of the steps. So I'll be taking it from a simple base mesh. I'll be showing you three different ways of creating those base meshes, and then we'll be actually taking one of those and detailing that model up. We'll be creating a likeness sculpt of the face. We'll be using DynaMesh and the difference between subdivided sculpts and DynaMesh. So I'll be showing you the concepts there. Be looking at um, topology tools for rigging and creating clean geometry using spotlight for reference and looking at reference in general and the importance of it we'll be looking at different methods for tiling alphas and full demonstration of those methods be creating hair fur and leather using the sculpting brushes inside of ZBrush we'll also be looking at using micro mesh and nano mesh for armor and to be able to swap easily swap the micro meshes and nano meshes out to quickly give you a different effect we'll be using the surface noise and the noise maker plugin be creating complex boolean actions for subtraction and creating the u mesh from these we'll be creating insert multi mesh and curve on surface brushes both appending and adding new brushes plus saving them as well be keeping your scene organized and using references. We'll also be, when we finished detailing the high res parts, 
subtools, we'll be using T-Pose to pose our final sculpt. Now I'll also be showing you how to use Z-Spheres for rigging as well, for setting Z-Spheres up as rigs inside of ZBrush. Be showing you how to save custom views and save the document as well as the tool. We will look at materials, color, and lighting, as well as rendering out from ZBrush. And as additional feature, I'll be showing you how to bring that into Keyshot and render out from that as well. And then finally, we're gonna end up with compositing our render passes. In this case, I'm gonna be using Photoshop to render them in. Now, additionally, as well as all of what I've just mentioned, I'll be showing you many, many tips and tricks along the way. So I would expect this course to be completed about three to four weeks. Just make sure you understand each step before you move on. There's over 180 video files, so it's hours and hours and hours of content, and some of the assets are supplied to get you started. Now there's support and a Q&A area that you can post questions because there's going to be questions it's a very complex course so the software that you're going to need to complete this course is ZBrush I'm using version 2018 you can use 2018 or 2019 um, for compositing I'll be using Photoshop but you can use something similar pretty much all of the packages such as GIMP which is a free one will allow you to set it up as well and if you've got Keyshot great because I show you how to render in that as well. So as I mentioned, this is module one of many of the courses that I'm gonna be building on. So I'm gonna be using the same asset in the next module, module two, and so on, until we complete all of the modules to get us to a game ready model, which I'll be actually putting into Unity or UDK, uh, Marmoset Toolbag for viewing, rendering, creating turntables. So if you're interested in game, this is module one of it, follow them all the way through. This is by far, I would say, one of the longest parts of the course, the module, because you're actually sculpting something and this is the base for what we're gonna use to create all of the other courses from. So I really hope you enjoy this course and yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the course and um, answering your questions.